Hey everyone, today I'm really excited for the video because I am going to walk you through a patch that I made with my modular rig. I've been playing a lot of with like funky stuff. Uh, I've been listening to Stevio a lot and I really love his stuff. I tried to take some of the concepts and things that he, that I've heard him describe in his patches and apply them here. This patch, I'm gonna be using Pam's Pro Workout as the brains of everything. It's gonna be sequencing everything, controlling everything, and it's gonna be kind of running the show. But I just wanna highlight that this video really isn't about Pam's, it's really about making a patch. So there's a whole bunch of different ideas in it. If you don't have Pam's Pro Workout, you might still get something out of this video. If you do have pants for a workout, this is a really fun way to patch it and to make some interesting things. I'm also really excited because I've been on this big DIY kick. Uh, I posted some videos for some of the modules I've made. Some of them I'm still editing. They don't get many views, so I'm not that motivated to post those videos, but I'm gonna do them eventually anyway. But I'm pretty psyched because there's something really awesome about using a module that you built yourself. And in this case, I'm using quite a few. In fact, most of the voices are actually modules that I built. And actually, I've already recorded myself going through the entire thing. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and play for you what it sounds like so you know what we're going to be building all right here we go super funky All right, that's the patch, let's jump into it. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna go over here to Pam's and the first thing we're gonna do is just reset everything. So I'm gonna hold down the knob on and we'll go over to reset all and yes. And if we go back to our main menu, you'll notice that everything has a multiplier of one. So we'll leave it at 100 for now. So how I'm gonna set this thing up I'm gonna be moving the camera around throughout this, so I hope it doesn't bother you too much. But we're gonna use PAMS as kind of the brain of this patch, and the top four are gonna be for drums. So I'm gonna have a kick drum, a snare drum, some hi-hats, and then this will just be like an extra percussive voice. It kind of sounds like a cowbell type thing. On the bottom, we're gonna have two uh, tonal voices. The first one we'll set up as a bass. So we'll have the volts per octave and then the gate coming out of six. Seven and eight are gonna be almost like a melody or a higher end. And that's, we're gonna use seven as the volts per octave and eight as the gate. So the first one's obviously gonna be kick. That's where we wanna start. So I'm gonna go to modifier number one and we'll go from output number one into, on the Boba Fat, there's two different gates gate inputs that you can do. This module, I haven't done a full video on it, but it's basically, there's two sides to it. It's a super fat drum when you play them together and you can plug it in just to the gate, or you can split the sides. I'm gonna go into this side, which is the kick drum side. I'm also gonna come out of the Boba Fat and go into a mixer, it's down below the screen, it's just a basic Mixer, it's actually a DIY build that I did for, through AI synthesis as well. I'm gonna route all the drums into that and that way it can kind of just be my drum mixer. So let's hear the, the bass sound.
So there we go. That's what we're going to use as our base. So the next thing we want to do is add a snare to it. I'm actually going to use plat as my snare. So we'll come from 2 into the trigger of plat. And we'll go out of plat and into the same mixer that I put the kick in. Now if I hit it, you'll hear it all at the same time. We'll fix that in a second. So now we're going to come right back up to the top. And the third one is going to be our hi-hats. So we're going to send that out of number three and into the trigger of my SD modular hi-hat. And just like before, I'm going to send the out of the hi-hat down into the drum mixer. And let's hear all of them together. So before we start actually making rhythm, I'm going to plug in number four into the other gate of the Boba Fat. So now we can hear that. So let's make this a little bit more interesting now. So, so let's add in some Euclidean steps and things like that. So I'm going to zoom in on Pam's Pro Workout so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we know that number one is our kick drum. So we're going to leave this going on every single beat. And if we go into it, we can actually change some of the settings. So I'm going to go over to Euclidean steps and we'll turn that on. And let's go ahead and set this to seven. I was watching these videos on Stevio, and he did all these crazy rhythms with Euclidean steps. Then we'll go over to Triggs, and we'll set this to 5. So now if I turn down everything but the kick, this is what it sounds like. Cool. Now the snare, let's go back here. What I want this to be doing is playing on like the three and the four of a four bar rhythm. Although it's not really a four bar rhythm because we're using uh, Euclidean rhythms, that's still the kind of feel that I want to do it. And how you'd accomplish that would be to change the modifier to half. But this would mean that it would play on the one and the three. And we don't want that. We want it to play on the two and the four. So what we need to do is go in and change the phase to 50%. And actually, just to demonstrate that, let me go back to modifier number one. And just for a quick second, we'll turn off the Euclidean steps. So you can kind of hear that it's just one, two, three, four. And the bass is kind of playing four to the floor kind of stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and turn the Euclidean steps back on just to make it a little bit more interesting. And that's what it sounds like. And just to mix it up, let's go back to our snare for a second trying to use all of the different features of PAMS. Let's lower the probability down to something like 90, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Cool. So we got a, we got a kick drum, we got a snare drum. Let's add in some hi-hats. So we're going to go to modifier three, and I'm going to turn this to, let's turn it up on the mixer, and this is what it sounds like. All right, let's mix up the hi-hats just a little bit. I'm going to go into it. And for this one, let's turn on a swing. So we'll hear, oops. We'll go swing 25%. All right, that already sounds cool.
and we'll add some modulation to all of this in a second. But right now, we're just setting up the beat in PAMS. So we're going to come out of this. Now we go to that like cowbell kind of sound. And let's do, let's see, let's just, just a start. We'll put it at times two. And let's see, how can we mix this one up? We'll go to probability, maybe down to 70. And let's set up the Euclidean steps the same as we did before with 7 and 5. But since this one's going twice as fast, it's still going to be kind of rotating in a polyrhythm. So let's turn that one on. Now with this one too, the Boba Fat's kind of an interesting module, but I'm going to set the, so the shape right now is kind of a gate like that, and we can adjust the width, and I think that changes the sound a little bit on the Boba Fat. Yeah. That way it's more of a trigger rather than a gate. All right, that's good enough for now. Let's zoom out, and I just want to add a little bit of modulation to the hi-hat. Okay, so I'm going to use maths for this because it's just really nice to adjust the LFO. So I'm going to turn on the cycle of maths, and I'm going to use number four. And we can set our rise to be fairly fast. And our fall will be somewhere in there. And I'll plug it into the CV of the hi-hat. Now I'm actually going to go in a negative value, so it's going to be lowering the decay. And it's already a pretty tight decay, but I think this just mixes it up a little bit. So let's listen to it. There we go. That's that's pretty cool. So it's got this the kind of nice evolving beat to it because the Euclidean patterns of the kick and the Eucl uh, Euclidean pattern of the cowbell sound that's kind of subtle, those are kind of rotating. Also, you have this LFO, which is not synced to the clock. That's kind of rotating and mixing up the hi-hat, but it's still going at a steady 16 beats. And then our snare is also playing at a steady rate. So it sounds steady, even though it's really, it's, it's probably technically not even in 4-4. Certainly if we take the snare drum out, this does not sound in 4-4. And that's what I think is so cool about these Euclidean rhythms. All right. Let's stop there for now. So that is our drum beat. That's all we need to do for our drums for right now. So now let's go ahead and set up a kind of bass sound. Now this is the one thing that I think makes this patch so cool. I'm going to be using the Honey Eater. This is SD modular. This is a module that I built. It's actually relatively cheap if you do it yourself. It's a great sounding oscillator. You can switch between triangle and saw on one oscillator. There's another one that's a pulse wave. And then you can also add two sub oscillators to it. So I think it's great for like bass sounds, but it's just really fat. And so what we're going to do with this is we're going to set it up with a typical envelope using Quadrax, but we're also going to set in another envelope for the filter. So it's going to have two envelopes associated with it. One controlling the gate, one controlling the filter. 
And again, just because I'm using Quadrax and I'm gonna use an SEM filter from Dofer and the Honey Eater, just because those are the modules I'm using, you can really, you can apply this sort of patching concept to anything. And it sounds super fat. So let's just dive right in. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is give this a voice. Let's go ahead and plug in number five into the volts per octave. And then we'll head on over to the number five output. We'll set the modifier to four times. So for the shape, what I'm gonna do is set it to a stepped random voltage. So there's a few things we gotta do with this is we're gonna have to quantize it, but we're also gonna have to set the level. So PAMS, the voltage levels ranges from zero to five volts. So if we're doing volts per octave, that means that it's gonna cover five octaves, which is just kind of way too much for a bass sound. So I want it to stay at right around one octave. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the level and you know 100 divided by 5 would be 20 percent so that would mean 20 percent would be one octave now i'm going to go ahead and raise it up to 25 just because i want to make sure to get the lowest note as well as one octave above it i want to just kind of have it included in it and it might get another note on top but that's okay because we're kind of random sequencing things so there's just so much control that we can have also, I'm going to choose to have this be in the Dorian mode. So let's quantize. So I'm going to go over to quantize. And we have a bunch of options now, but PAMS does not give us the Dorian one as an option. So I'm actually going to create it. And I think I already have, but you know what? Let's just do it again. So for the bass though, I'm not gonna want all the notes of the Dorian mode to be played. I would rather have the bass notes be focused on the chord tones of the root uh, of the root chord, which is gonna we're gonna do it in C Dorian, so it's gonna be a C minor seven. So let's go ahead and program in C, E flat, G, and B flat. Cool, so now all the notes that are gonna be played to the volts per octave are gonna be within a one octave range playing only C, E flat, G, and B flat. Let's actually go ahead and hear it. Now, if the, now the Honey Eater actually has two sub oscillators. So we could play those in unison. Oh yeah. That's what it's gonna sound like once we start mod modulating the pulse with. But that is super fat. All right, so let's set up the rest of this voice. Okay, so as I said before, we're gonna kind of need two different, uh, two different envelopes. One's gonna control the gate of the voice. The other is gonna control the filter, an envelope on the filter. So since we're gonna use number six as as our gate, as our clock source, we're gonna have to multiply it. So I guess I'll use red for this. So we'll come out of number six and I'm gonna go into this multiple, which is actually another AI synthesis build that was a DIY module. So I'll put the, you can watch me build it in the link in the description. We'll go back to number six. And this one we're gonna to set to number two times four. So that's gonna be playing 16th notes as well. Oh, and I almost forgot. So since we had the swing on the hi-hats, let's, let's add some swing to both of these. So I'm gonna go to the flex op. We'll turn that on, we'll go to swing, it's at 25%. And 
If I hold down the start stop button and turn the the blue knob, it just switches over to the same function on the other output. So it goes to number five. So now both of those will be swinging together. So we have the clock going into the multiple. And so now I'm going to come out of the multiple and we'll send it into Quadrax. We'll go into trigger number one. And since I want separate triggers, we're going to take the second, another output from the multiple and go into trigger number two. So before we even mess with the filter, let's just set up the voice. So I'm going to come out of Quadrax and go into, actually I can get a shorter chord for this, and go out of Quadrax, number one, and go into the CV of my quad VCA right here. And then we'll send the voice of the honey eater into the audio of the quad VCA. And then we can send, and then finally I'm gonna send it out of the quad VCA and into the mixer so now our voice should be set up. Let's hear how it sounds. There we go. But let's color it a little bit. So before I actually go into the VCA, we're going to send it over to the SEM filter. So I'm going to come out of the quad VCA. We'll go audio in here, and then I'll go from the audio out of the filter into the mixer. So now... Cool. So we're getting there. So now let's add in that second envelope to the CV2 in of the SEM filter. And I'm going to turn the frequency all the way down. And so now what's going to happen is when this hits, it's going to send it's going to open up the filter and we can even set it a little bit lower than the gate and let's listen to what that sounds like maybe lower it a little bit Let's hear it with our drums. There, so that's already sounding pretty cool, and we can add some more modulations to it in a second. But you know, I think with this, I actually would really like to add some more kind of interesting rhythms to it. So we're gonna go back to number six, and hmm, let's so let's set up a Euclidean rhythm for this, similar to what we were doing before. And for this one, I'm going to go, we'll stick with our primes, because that's what Stevio did. And we'll have the trigs at seven. There, 
there. That sounds really great. But there's another cool feature in Pam's Pro Workout where this actually kind of works like a Turing machine and you can loop different beats. So let me show you that. So, so what we want to do is, since what we want to loop are the notes, we're going to go back to number five because that's where the notes were coming from. And I'm going to turn this on and we're going to turn it to loop like an eight bar beat. So let's see if you can pick it out. Now what's cool about it is because of the Euclidean rhythm, it's actually going to be sort of rotating and kind of going through different things because number six, the gate to it is not set to loop the beats. So there is going to be some variance, but it still kind of will repeat a little bit of the same thing. And another feature to it is this loop nap feature. So we're going to, we're going to set that to one and loop weight we'll set to like, let's say five, just again, keep things kind of weird and mixed up. So that means it'll loop the beat five times and then it'll take a break from it and send out random voltages for one time through. So in this case, it sounds like it's just kind of laying on that low note. So cool, let's just leave that in there just to kind of mix up our bass voice a little bit. So we got our bass voice. Let's add in a lead voice. So we're gonna do that with seven and eight. Let's change both of these to four because we want them to play 16th notes too. So for this one, let's see. Let's set this one up the same way. We're gonna go to random voltages. I'll zoom in on Pam's. So for this one, we're gonna do random voltages as well. Let's go over to level, because we wanna control this. So let's say we want this to be about a two octave range or just above it. So let's set it to 43%. Now, I don't want this to play playing in the bottom end of it. So I want it to be kind of one octave above. So I'm gonna set the offset up to 20%. So then we can go over to probability, we keep, we can vary this up through the gates. So that should be good for the notes of the voice. Let's head over to eight. This is the gates. So we'll set, we already set this to 16th notes. Let's put in some Euclidean steps. Let's go crazy with this one. We'll do 19 and how about, we can always change this later. 11, something like that. Oops. Let's go back to number seven. And let's actually loop. Do I want to loop the beats on this one? Probably not. But we got to quantize it. I forgot to do that. So for this one, let's go over to, we're going to have to plug this one in as well. Oh, I think I already did it. So right there, yeah, user two. I already have the Dorian mode. Since we're playing in C Dorian, it's just C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. So I program that in. So now our other voice will be quantized to C Dorian. Okay, let's zoom out and we'll hook it up. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this AI synthesis VCO that I built. Well, let's plug it in through. Number seven is going into volts per octave. And then the gate we are gonna send over to Quadrax in the same manner that we did before. So I'm going to send it over here. Number three is going to be our envelope for this voice. 
Actually, let's keep it consistent with colors. We'll do our gates as red. I think I'm going to run out of color-coded ones anyway, but whatever. So then we'll go out of three. In into Quadrax, we'll go into number two. So now we can send the audio from our VCO into Quadrax. And we'll come out of Quadrax. And we're going to go into our Popple filter right over here. And again, you can use any filter you want. That's just what I have. And from there, I will go down into the mixer that's off the screen, but it's just a basic mixer. All right, let's hear what it sounds like. I'm gonna turn down everything else and we can just hear this voice. You know what, I just remembered, we want this to swing just like the other 16th notes. So I'm gonna set that one to swing. We'll set that one to swing. I think I want to set the Euclidean rhythms. I'm hearing it just kind of not syncing upright. So I'm going to set these to the same things that I had on the other one, just to see if that helps. I think it was a 19. <laughs> to something like, I don't know, 77. There, that'll be good. So now we got our voice set up. So let's just hear it all together for a second. I'm going to turn up my drums, turn up my bass sound, and this is what it sounds like. Definitely getting there. So now let's add in some more modulation. So we're already going from maths into the hi hat. Let's use maths again. And I guess let's send this to the resonator of the popple. And actually, you know, I'm thinking rather than going just straight into uh, from the popple into the mixer, I'm going to actually go into. My Clouds Clone, which is an after later audio cumulus. It's off the screen. Let's see if I can get it in. So my after later cumulus is right here. It's Clouds Clone. So we're sending that. Let's go where was I? from the popple out and we'll go into clouds. And I think I've already have this. <laughs> Just adds a little bit of a nice reverb to it. And here 
here is it with everything. Let's do some more. I got Woggle Bug here. We might as well send it somewhere. So let's do the Woggle into the position of clouds. And we might as well send the smooth voltage somewhere too. Oh, let's have, let's modulate our um, pulse width. So let's hear what that's. <laughs> I want to modulate the cutoff of the popple, so I'm going to use this uh, LFO here I have from Dofer. We'll attenuate it right next to it, and I'm going to send this one up into the cutoff. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. And I like to have the pulse width being modulated in my honey eater just a little bit to make it sound kind of fatter. So we'll send that through the other attenuator and then have that go up into the pulse width of the honey eater. Let's hear what that sounds like. So there you go, the patch is kind of done and you can play around with different modulations and mixes and things like that. And what's just so awesome about it is it's ready to go. You just hit start from pans and you're going. So there you have it, that's the patch. I hope you found this video helpful or enjoyable. If you are inclined to buy some of these modules, then please check out my affiliate links in the description. 
Uh, they're for Perfect Circuit. They're a great retailer. And if you purchase through that link, then I get a small tip. And it's a great way to support my channel at no additional cost to you. So I'd really appreciate that. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.